James Tony against Roy Jones Jr. We've got three undercard fights to show you in anticipation of the main event, starting with the two fighters who are getting into the ring right now. That is Derek Gaynor, featherweight, and he is from Pensacola, Florida. He is the best friend of Roy Jones Jr. He calls Roy Jones his manager. You see the record 12 wins, two losses, and six KOs. Fighter records tonight as these fighters get into the ring are brought to you by The Ring, the Bible of Boxing. Gaynor a rangy southpaw, and that southpaw style is expected to be one of his potential tactical advantages in the bout against this young man, Roberto Garcia. 16 wins, no losses, 13 KOs. You see that he's from Oxnard, California, but he trains in Big Bear as the stablemate of Oscar De La Hoya. His trainer, Robert Alcazar, the same man who trains De La Hoya. All right, this young fighter is considered a real comer, just 19 years old, started professionally at the age of 17. And here's your tail of the tape. And you can see that Gaynor has a three-inch height advantage, a six-inch reach advantage. Add to that the fact that he's a southpaw, and this looms as a tough tactical challenge for the still-developing Roberto Garcia. Punch that numbers, Larry. Take a look and see just how active these fighters are, and you can see that Garcia is the more active fighter. He keeps coming forward. He'll have Gaynor going backward. Jabs, Gaynor is going to have to use his right jab to hold off Garcia because Garcia is a hooking fighter who can punch. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Harold? Jim, Jim we're definitely setting a record for televised boxing tonight. Four fights, four different sets of rules. In our first fight, Roberto Garcia and Derek Gaynor will box tonight using the rules of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Ten rounds. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. You can be saved by the bell in the last round only. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we'll go to the scorecards after three rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. Thank you, Harold. Right now, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the MGM Grand Hotel Casino and Theme Park of Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated in association with the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Bud Weiser. Proud to be your bud. Present an evening of professional boxing for your entertainment. All the bouts you see tonight are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Let's get things started with our first bout, ladies and gentlemen. The three judges assigned by the state of Nevada are Art Lurie, Al Siciliano, and Paul Smith. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action will be referee Toby Gibson. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 10 rounds of boxing in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the green trunks with khaki trim and weighing in at 128 pounds. He comes to us from Pensacola, Florida with a professional record of 12 victories, 6 by KO against only 2 defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, Derek Smoke Gainer. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. Wearing the white trunks with gold letters, weighing in at 126 and one half pounds. From La Colonia Boxing Club of Oxnard, California, he brings an undefeated record of 16 and 0, 13 KOs, introducing Robert Grandpa Garcia. Give me that water again. Okay, gentlemen, I've given you both your instructions prior to this fight in your respective dressing rooms. Are there any questions from either corner? No questions. Give me a good, clean fight and obey my commands at all time. Good luck to both good of luck. you. Garcia seems a little young to be called Grandpa, Gil. <laughs> sure does. But you know, one thing I've noticed about Gaynor, he has uh, what I call tricky trunks. Uh, they're a little bit high, but they stick out in the front, which is going to induce... Garcia to land a lot of low blows because punches that would ordin ordinarily skip that protrusion are going to hit him in the trucks. Let's wait and see. And then meanwhile, uh, Jim, you mentioned the gander was a southpaw, but you left out one word, a tall southpaw, which really complicates the problem for Garcia. 
So it's an interesting challenge for Garcia, and this is 17th professional fight. Remember, he's got 13 KOs coming in. He told us yesterday that the toughest of those 16 preceding fights was against a southpaw named Gabriel Castro. And already you can see that Garcia looks a little bit tentative as he tries to find an opening against the rangy gainer. Well, he should have been working with southpaws uh, in the gym, getting ready for this fight, and they should have a fight plan going in. Uh, not that he has to figure things out uh, after he gets in there. So far, Gaynor has thrown a jab or two. There's another. Garcia with one lunging right toward the midsection, and that's about it as they check each other out for the first minute of this fight. Scheduled for 10 rounds. These are featherweights. Garcia weighed in at 126 and a half, and Derek Gaynor weighed in at 128. Garcia's trainer is the same man who trains Oscar De La Hoya. Derek Gaynor is trained by the same man who trains Roy Jones Jr., Alton Merkerson. Gaynor flicking the jab, alternately moving to the right and then the left. I think it's the plan, Gil, for him to move laterally in both directions rather than choosing one. Well, he's trying to use his height and his, the fact that he is a southpaw. He's doing a lot of fainting, not too much punching. And Garcia not punch, not punch, is throwing a few punches when he does get this guy within range. In case you question the maturity of the 19-year-old Garcia, he'll be 20 next month. He went to Japan to fight as a professional when he was 17 years old because he couldn't be licensed to fight in California oh, at age 17. Keep it clean. They must have thought a lot of them to send them all the way to Japan, invest that kind of money, and apparently it has paid off. Relatively slow tactical round one. Garcia trying to make it a little bit more active now in the last 30 seconds. Hasn't been able to land too much, but he's making his presence felt. Maneuvering Gaynor back into the ropes and trying to go to the body. Still, Gaynor with the long jab and the footwork stays out of harm's way throughout round one. Big shot, okay? I want you to hit this guy. He ain't that fast. His punches are slow smoke. Your hands are real fast. You can move on this guy and hit him with two and three point combination. Then back out. Don't sit up there. Don't let him make his, let him, let him keep his feet still. Keep it moving, okay? Give me some in and out. Work your jab up and down. Come back to the top with the left hand, son. Don't. At ringside, Roy Jones Jr., one of the stars of the show later on this evening. He is listed as Derek Gaynor's manager. He is Derek Gaynor's best friend. They've known each other a long time down in Pensacola, Florida. Some more offense. I need you to touch him a little bit more, okay? Sit down. Sit what about Roy being out here at ringside in the hours before the biggest fight of his life, Gil? Well, you know, I've had, when I managed Daniel Griffith, uh, his cousin Bernard was a fighter, and he was very emotionally involved with Bernard, but I would certainly never uh, let him out of the you know, arena when the fight was going on with Bernard was fighting underneath. After all, I mean, these big fights for like a Roy Jones, the most important fight of his life, he should be concentrating on that fight and not worried about this uh, young fellow in there, despite the fact that this is his best friend. Very so, bad move on my, my So part. ideally, you'd have him in the dressing room. Absolutely. And Garcia has now switched to southpaw. We were told he might do this even for a full round at a time. So now you got southpaw against southpaw, and Garcia immediately looks more aggressive and then switches back to the conventional stance. He tries to come over the top with the right hand. Oh, hold him, hold him, hold him. Box it out there. Box you it know, out for Gaynor to win any of these rounds, he's going to have to expose himself a little and throw some punches. Uh, right now, he's fighting strictly defensively. It sounds to me, Gil, like he hasn't forgotten the warning given to him to the first fighter he ever fought when he was 12 years old. The kid said to him, I fought eight fights and have nine knockouts. 
Garcia. I think Garcia. He's been on the defense ever since. I think Garcia's uh, camp uh, sent the message to him. Uh, <laughs> they said that uh, Garcia had the 16 fights and 17 knockouts. <laughs> <laughs> And now Garcia's back to Southpaw again. And it looks as though Garcia has decided that he can stop take a few chances as long as Gaynor is going to be as conservative and self-protective as he's been. But you know, I don't think that the Garcia would have to switch to Southpaw at all because uh, uh, with Gaynor fighting strictly defensively, he can just keep putting round after round in the bank on simple aggressiveness and landing two or three punches around. To none for the other fellow. But he himself seems to have been more comfortable being aggressive, Gil, when he switched to that southpaw stance. Look of greater determination now in Garcia's eyes as he seems to feel an inner pressure to get inside and make something happen. There's the hardest punch Gainer's thrown in the fight. First clean punch that he's landed in the fight. Okay, stop punching. Let him up. We mentioned the fact that he's a tall southpaw. He gets back against those ropes and leans, leans back, and uh, Garcia can't reach him. Gainer doubling up on the jab. Finally beginning to cut loose just a little bit in the closing 30 seconds of round number two. But mostly it's been Garcia chasing and Gainer running. Stop punching. Come on, wrestle. Let's go. Let him up. Corners. And while Roy Jones sits at ringside and watches his stablemate and good friend and protege Derek Gaynor, James Tony, rocks out in his dressing room and gears himself up mentally for tonight's IBF Super Middleweight Championship defense against Jones. Going inside. Cortando el ring, cuerpo, cuerpo, cuerpo. Okay, I don't do I it gave now. I gave Tony the first round already. You know, Larry, and we only saw him yesterday, but it looks to me like he gained some weight. You understand? You can we'll hear that later. He tells us he gained, what was it, Larry? 16 pounds? Yeah, he weighed in at 167, and uh, the word came down that by the time he went to bed about eight hours later last night, he weighed 183. I, I find it hard to believe. And uh, perhaps more importantly, I don't think it could do him any good. But we have a scale in his dressing room, and he promised to get on the scale for us sometimes later before the main event to see just exactly how much he does weigh now. James Tony told us the hardest part of every fight is making weight. Round three, Garcia against Gaynor. You see, one of the reasons if you're a fight manager, okay, stop, you don't like to fight southpaws because even if Garcia wins this fight, it's not going to be a memorable performance. It doesn't enhance his uh, career or his drawing ability at all. Particularly in, in this, his first big national exposure. But it will teach him, Gil, not to fight southpaws, or tall southpaws again. Oh, you, you, you don't have to teach him, Larry. You have to teach the manager. <laughs> In the case of Garcia, Robert Alcazar doubles as both trainer and manager. Good right hand to the body by Garcia, but one punch at a time as Gaynor clinches and then moves away. You know, not too many years ago, or maybe too many years ago, if a fighter was fighting the way Gaynor was fighting, the referee would uh, stop the fight. I just mentioned the magic word, paid. If you don't fight, you're not going to get paid. You'd be surprised how many times that brought out the aggressiveness in a fighter. Uh, Gaynor is punching short, big, tall guys, not even reaching Garcia with his punches. You can see him pulling back with that straight left hand before it landed. I can recall Teddy Brenner, the great matchmaker at Madison Square Garden, during a fight like this, going into the corner and telling his corner, you better get that guy to fight. 
or will, we won't let him in here again. I've, I've, <laughs> seen, I've seen Teddy Bennett do that many and many a time. That's why he was a great matchmaker. One of the reasons. Get off his head, get off his head, get off his head. Toby Gibson keeps telling Derek Gaynor to get off of Robert Garcia's head. Garcia punches away at the body while Gaynor listens to Gibson and doesn't move his hands. Very defensive fight so far by Derek Gaynor and Robert Garcia doing his best to try to speed up the action but with little effect so far. Actually, there's no point in Garcia making all that fainting movement because it's not doing a bit of good. He just has to punch at that body or shoulder or arm. <laughs> Hard body punch by Gaynor. Best shot he's landed in the fight so far as round three comes to a close. Our interpreter in the corner where Robert Alcazar speaks to Roberto Garcia is Hector Garcia. Cut the ring, you have to cut the ring. Two, just two hits. Just two punches. Use the right hand on the other body. Just get closer, cut the ring, keep cutting the ring and move tight to side. Your hands up. Carol Letterman, your score. Larry, 29, 28, two rounds to one, Roberto Garcia. I thought he lost the first round just by doing nothing. He hardly threw a punch in the first round, but then he just took over the fight. But I'll tell you something, I wish the heck they'd let him sit down between, between rounds. That standing up is going to get Roberto Garcia real tired. They ought to let him sit down between rounds. Well, I gave uh, Garcia all size. three rounds. I don't think that Gaynor did anything in any of the rounds to, to uh, warrant getting them scored for him. And I have, I, I agree with you, Larry. I don't, I don't think Gaynor has tried to win a round. Hard left hand by Garcia drives Gaynor back into the ropes and gets the attention of the crowd. Garcia once again switches around to a southpaw stance, goes hard with the left hand to the body, and then tries to come up okay, and stop, under, stop, and Gaynor just him. grabs him and up. ties him up. Left hand over the top, landed by Gaynor. He was just a tad short with it, but made contact. You can see when Gaynor throws that straight left hand, he's trying to punch and get out of the way at the same time. Yeah, and you exactly. can't do both. It, it seems to me he's been in the gym a lot with Roy Jones, but he can get away with it, Jones. He can land that punch and then get out of there before you right. can okay, stop punching. counter. Let him up, let him up, let him up. Let him up. What you have to stress to your fighter is the punch has to go in the front of the guy's head and out the back. <laughs> Not just touch and get out of there. Maybe sometimes being in the gym with an unorthodox fighter who's an astronomical talent like Jones can be a little misleading to other fighters and a little bit destructive to them. Well, except that the gainer has had his own style for years and he is a southpaw, so it shows no... Uh, Inclination to be following what Roy Jones does in the ring. Hard left hand over the top by Gaynor. That one got Garcia's attention, but now here comes the Oxnard, California teenager. Gain is getting a little warmed up now. He's getting into the swing of things and he's fighting a lot more. Much more aggressive this round. Okay, stop punching. Let him up, let him up. Garcia just sticking to his business. Continues to come straight forward and try to find opportunities against the rangy southpaw who presents a difficult target for it. Stop punching, stop punching. As 
as many as six rounds remaining in this one. Two other preliminary fights scheduled before the main event. Roy Jones Jr. still at ringside. You understand? If you get on the inside, if you ain't gonna punch, if you ain't gonna punch, I want you to hold this guy. Don't hold too long, then come out to the side. You understand? Yeah. You listening? Okay. Okay. Play back my head, right? The combinations that you're throwing, that's what I want you Good to keep job. doing. Anytime he's in range, anytime he's in range, I want you to keep a jab in his face, lock the, the left hand in, then move out. There's Oscar De La Hoya in his dressing room. He fights against Carl Griffith just a little bit later on this evening. And De La Hoya is watching his stablemate, Robert Garcia. Or if you prefer, Roberto Garcia, as Garcia goes against Derek Gaynor. De La Hoya had his own problems with a, a southpaw. Jimmy Bredahl. Jimmy Bredahl. And, stop uh, punching, stop punching. Presumably he's That's trying to uh, pass along some of his wisdom about that experience. But I don't know if, if it means anything when you're fighting a guy who fights like this. And Walton Murkison in the corner uh, was not ashamed to tell his guy to grab and hold on. And now Gain is landing some straight left hands. We've got to acknowledge that Gaynor's plan may yet pay off, Gil, if he manages to wear young Garcia down, okay, stop as he stop told us in the meeting he thought he could do. Well, uh, I, I had Gaynor winning the last round, and he's been very effective so far in the beginning of this round. Okay, stop punching, stop. He's not pleasing the public, but Let him go. he's being effective in the ring. I think he's terrible. I can't stand anything he's doing. Stop punching, stop punching, stop punching. There's that trunk problem as Toby Gibson keeps telling Garcia to bring his punches up, Gil. Well, you can see, you can see the way the cup protrudes. It's, uh, it does catch a lot of punches before they land to the uh, abdomen. Very frustrating for young, for young Garcia. Garcia lands a left hand, and Gaynor infuriates many in the crowd by backpedaling and dancing. What about Larry Merchant? As well, he's disgusted. Not infuriated, Larry. Uh, disgusted, right? Okay, stop. No, him. infuriated. I don't think I could be infuriated any more than I am by watching a fighter like this who obviously doesn't like to fight. I won that round, Jim. Infuriated. I think you're one up on me. I couldn't get him to own up to disgusted. of Derek Gaynor, still a bit of a mystery for the aggressor in the fight, Roberto Garcia, and we're halfway home. Put the pressure on. Keep the pressure. Use the right hand all the time. Put that pressure. Keep, don't fight outside. Get closer to this guy and use that uppercut. Straight uppercut. Straight. And straight. Just get closer. Put the pressure and make him fight. Go for it, guy. That's with the stomach. Touch the stomach, then come up to the head, okay? Change the jab up. Don't shoot at the same place all the time. Take deep breath. Come on, come on. Don't let him get you on the inside. Okay. Don't, 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 don't let him get you on the inside. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on.
Round six of a scheduled ten between Roberto Garcia in the white trunks, Derek Gaynor in the green. Garcia, stablemate and good friend of Oscar De La Hoya. Derek Gaynor, good friend and managed by Roy Jones Jr. Get off his head, Smoke. Get off his head. Good body attack by Garcia to begin round six. Okay, stop punching. Stop punching. What Garcia should be doing, in my opinion, is sliding to his left and throwing left hooks even okay, at the guy's right I don't need no wrestling. Right I'm going to tell both of you. Come here. Both of you. Let's go. That way he'll at least touch something and have the guy in front of him and bring the guy into exchanges. But when he's trying to reach it from too far away, he just can't reach the guy. He's got to step over. So say Stop. again, keep sliding left and throwing left hooks to the body. Right, Stop right to the guy's Stop elbow. You don't even have to punching. worry about hitting him in the oh, body. He'll get his time. elbow out of the way. But then at least you're close to the guy and you can hit him with other punches. He seems to be opting for the straight right hand approach. Well, you we can see so far he hasn't been able to reach the guy with it. Yeah. Okay, stop if he the punch. I don't need to wrestle. If he Let's go. Stop steps it. over, he'll be a lot closer. Come here. Keep it clean inside. It. Stop the wrestling. He'll be able to land that right hand. Straight left hand inside by Gaynor. Considerably more aggressive in the last couple of rounds, but still, whenever Garcia mounts an attack, Gaynor is given to grabbing and holding. Again, you see, he's, allow he's allowing, he's allowing Gaynor to move to his right and escape. Gaynor trying to come up and under and catch Garcia underneath with an uppercut. There's a straight left hand, partially blocked Bots by down, Garcia. Head, Garcia smoke. lands a right hand as he goes in. the more frustrated Garcia becomes Gil, the more chance there is he'll make a mistake. Not a mistake, make a lot of mistakes. And Gainey can score points and put rounds in the bank. Win rounds. Stop punching. Let him up. Let him up. Six, much like its predecessors. Let me get a few more punches out of you, though, okay? Okay? Smoke, remember what I told you in the second round? This guy can't fight moving back. Mm -hmm. Try him every once in a while. Right okay, right okay. Okay, give me the spoon. His eyes is mine. Where okay. would Not that one off the floor. Listen to me. Come on, come on. Keep working that way. Keep cutting the ring. The right hand and the left hand. And get closer. Get closer to this guy. He's desperate. He's desperate. So go inside and keep fighting this guy. Okay. Okay, let's go. The right hand and put keep the pressure on. Let's go, Merck. Round seven. Berto Garcia in white, Derek Gaynor in green. Garcia unbeaten with a record of 16 and 0. through those six rounds. Larry, 57, 57, three rounds apiece. I'll tell you the honest to God's truth. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a close fight because of the fact that Roberto Garcia okay, can't get inside. Fine. He just can't get in Derek Gaynor's chest where he should be. And Derek Gaynor is out boxing him. He sticks, he hits him, and he moves. He gets out of there. I've got it five rounds to one for Garcia. If Derek Gaynor won 100 fights in a row this way, I wouldn't pay a nickel to see his 101st. I was going to say, Larry, loving Gaynor's effort as much as you do. You've got to be more enthralled than ever with the explanation for his loss in his last fight against Greg Torres in Atlantic City when he says that he was distracted and eventually foiled by some hair tonic that came off of Torres's hair and got into his eyes. Hair tonic disguised as a glove with a fist in it, no doubt. 
Let's not be so hard on him, Larry. It could have been died from the glove. <laughs> I don't want to be hard on the kid. I mean, he's doing the best he can. And I will give him that. He's in there and I'm okay, out stop here. Punching. and uh, stop. Stop. He's trying. And it's trying your patience. Get off his head. Okay, stop punching, stop punching. I see a lunging inside stop and he's able to push smoke. Gainer into the ropes. Well, he's becoming more frustrated yep. as time goes by. He's starting to forget the, his balance and his rhythm. And of course, the more he does that, the more dangerous the situation could become for him, although Gainer doesn't look to have the kind of power that might enable him to put Garcia no, away with one shot. No, I don't think that he could Stop hurt punching. Garcia with a punch because uh, most of the time he's he's trying to punch and get out of the way at the same time. The punches really don't have much of an impact. Okay, stop punching, stop punching. Okay, stop punching. Let him off. Get him off his head. Another headlock by Gainer. Again, uh, Garcia was just coming straight in. No angles, nothing. Hard left hand in there by Gaynor. It seemed to momentarily stop Garcia in his tracks, and then Roberto began coming forward again. He's been the aggressor throughout most of the bout. Stop punching. Let him up. Let him up. Listen to me. Tape. Give him some tape, baby. James Tony on the left, Roy Jones Jr. on the right. Tony in his dressing room in a meditation as he prepares for the main event. And Roy Jones Jr. still out here at ringside as he's watching his good buddy and protege, Derek Gaynor, trying to pick up the 13th win of his professional career against two losses. And just to repeat what you said earlier, Gil Clancy, you think that Jones's present activity sitting here and watching his buddy fight is a bad idea. Absolutely. He doesn't realize he get rid of a lot of nervous energy. I mean, I, I know uh, watching my granddaughter play tennis in tournaments would take a lot out of me, and I was just a spectator. So I imagine it's taking something out of uh, Roy Jones sitting there rooting for his fighter. <laughs> Let's go ahead, you're looking good, baby. You are looking good, baby. Jones with a slightly different opinion of Gaynor's progress than, say, Larry Merchant. Well, I have to fight very close right now. I have Garcia one point ahead. Best left hook that uh, Garcia landed just then. Gainer was moving away as head. Garcia landed head. that left hook. And Garcia didn't get a chance to put a second power shot in behind it. Garcia taking a lot of chances now to try to get inside. Well, we we okay, had stop, mentioned stop, that he's stop, getting frustrated, him up, him up. taking chances, but in so doing, he's allowing uh, Gainer to score some clean punches and then get out of there as he just did then. It was a combination of Garcia coming in just Six, as Gaynor released seven, the punch. Hey, That's me what happens when you take too many chances. There's that frustration again. He forgot that the other guy could still throw a punch. I guess anybody would have forgotten as a few punches as Gaynor threw in the fight. So unbeaten Roberto Garcia having been decked here in the eighth round. Now in a good bit of trouble against Derek Gaynor. Gainer looking for a chance to land another clean shot. But still being very self-protective while doing so. And there's a hard left hook. Garcia's in trouble. Wobbly legs for Garcia. He manages to stay up. Almost went down. All the hard shots now being landed by Gainer. No hold, no hold, no hold. Fox it out. Gainer showing something there, Gilly remembered to go to the body even while trying to finish. Well, he figures he's got a very, very hurt opponent in front of him at the moment. He's letting everything hang out. If Garcia gets through the round, 
He can be refreshed between rounds. This may wind up being be beneficial to uh, Garcia. Less than a minute to go in the round, but 50 seconds, still plenty of time for Gainer to get it done. Garcia a little bit surer of his footing now. And here comes Garcia. Stop right there, let him up. Let him up. Get off his head. Opened the glove on that left hand, did Gaynor. It was more of a slapping blow. Garcia about to make it out of the eighth round. I did give that round <laughs> to Gaynor. This fight is yours. This fight is yours, but you have to move. You have to keep moving. Oh, yeah. Don't don't risk anything. Here we see Garcia walking right into that punch. He had been doing all the hard punching or most of it. Gainer just loaded up and and hit a softball. And there you see Roy Jones. Maybe that's the way Roy Jones wants to fight tonight, Gil. Perish the thought. That's why well, I want uh, you to hit and don't that hit. That happens. You understand? Let's do what, what boxing is all about. Okay. Let's do what boxing is cool, all about. Cool, Let's go. Let's go. Round nine in a fight whose complexion is suddenly changed dramatically. Uh, the eighth round knockdown of Garcia produced by Derek Gaynor. The short left hand you saw. And that punch seemed to land high on the head, and uh, it, it looked like the glove was partially open. I just don't know uh, why it had that much effect. I think he was just stepping in. It was the combination of Garcia moving in at the same moment that the punch was thrown. Not really sure, Gil, what point Alcazar was trying to make to his fighter when he said, keep moving, don't take any chances, this fight is yours. I, I couldn't understand that myself. I know if I was in the corner, I'd be telling my guy, you have to win those last two rounds. I just don't understand that at all. And Garcia wasn't listening said, anyway, no, because no, as you can no. see, he's still taking Stop chances right to right try to get, get inside. Well, that's what he has to do. Again, that last now must have taken a little bit of energy out of uh, Gaynor, which we had mentioned earlier, make him a little bit more of a target. Garcia's got his legs back now and Stop wants to throw everything but the kitchen out. sink for the moment. Let him out. Stop punching, let him out. One thing Gaynor has learned how to do is hold. He can hold. He's an octopus. And again, uh, Garcia throwing caution to the wind. He's just walking in, allowing himself to be picked apart. Hold him behind the head. I don't need it. Toby Gibson's done a lot of talking, there a lot of again. warning to Derek Gaynor, but no points deducted so far. Stop punching. Let him up. Here's another conversation. Box it out of there. Quit holding. Box it out of there. It looks as if Gaynor is just giving this round away, making no attempt to try to win Stop the punching. round. Stop punching. Stop punching. Let's go. You hear me? And Garcia, though Let willing, doesn't seem to have any snap in his punches no, now. No, he's just being a busy fighter and scoring points at the moment. Stop punching. Let him up. Let him up. Object lesson on the dangers of sending your talented young Stop fighter punching. in against up. a tall southpaw at an early stage in his career. To me, uh, that's like sacrilegious. <sighs> Get off his head. Get off his head. You gotta admire Garcia's effort. He doesn't have a lot behind these punches, but he's throwing and throwing. No hold, no hold. Stop punching. Let him up. Time! And Garcia appears 
to get back some of what he lost in round eight on the scorecard. Keep punching. That's it, man. This fight is yours. Okay, listen. Okay. You got one more round to go. You understand me? Get this guy in. Give me some one, two. I don't care about. No pierda la mente nada. Don't lose your mind now. Keep working now. Don't give him any distance. Let your hands go this round. Keep them feet moving. Don't let them tie you up like that. Okay. Come on, baby. Now, you, it's, your, it's your time. Come on. Right, you know what I told you? Take deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Let's go. Do it for me. Do it for me. Let's go. Do it for me. Let's go. That's what we need, this one, baby. Suck it up, baby. Come on, Smoke. Come on, the last one now. Round 10 begins. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored so far? Jim, 86, 84, four, five rounds to four, okay, Derek Gaynor. He Stop. took Let nine rounds for, for Robert Alcazar to let the Garcia sit down in the corner. The guy was exhausted. For God's sake, he was huffing and puffing, couldn't get inside on Gaynor, and Gaynor's outboxing him. But it's a very, very close fight. Certainly, Garcia could pull out a draw or even a one-point win. Certainly, Gaynor gets an extra point for the knockdown. Okay, stop punching, stop punching. Round 10 beginning much the way round 9 was fought, with Garcia mounting most of the effort. Gaynor moving away. Now there's a hard left hand from Gaynor. And that, for the moment, stops Garcia. Stop punching, let him up. Damn it, let him up. Put the hold. Time. No more holding, don't lose the players. I'm stupid. Still no deduction. You get the impression that Toby Gibson is close to issuing the point deduction, and that, of course, would nullify the two-point round for the knockdown if, in fact, okay, it takes place. Up. Well, he has given them so many warnings. Don't do it again, or don't do it again, or... Right. Garcia trying to land a straight okay, right hand, which would turn things around. Well, that's right it, now, that's it. Right now, Jim, it's a matter of scoring points. He's trying to keep busy, trying to Stop the hit the game the more the game hits him in this round. Oversimplifying things. Gotta let him up, let him up, let him up. Last minute of the fight, Robert Garcia came in with 16 wins, no losses, 13 KOs, and Derek Gaynor came in at 12 and 2. So it's Garcia who may be in jeopardy of losing his unblemished record if he can't pull out a victory in this one. Well, again, it's going to depend on whether the judges like aggressiveness or, uh, or, or ring generalship or whatever you call what the gainer is doing at the moment. Punch it out of Because uh, Garcia has been the okay, aggressor him up, him up. throughout the entire fight. Closing seconds. Garcia with one last effort. Knocks the tassel off of Gainer's shoe and leaves it limply lying in the ring, but that was the best he could do. He got the tassel, he didn't get the chin. Well, I don't know. I had the Garcia winning the fight by one point. Very, very close. Including winning round 10, right? Including winning round 10. And that's with a two point round in the eighth? Yes, Get with the two point class. round in the eighth. I had a dead All even right, going into right. the 10th round. And, and unless I miss my guess, Harold Letterman is going to have uh, Derek Gaynor having won the fight by a single point. No, I got to win it by three points. <laughs> Harold, give us your final scorecard. Jim, I got it 96 93, six rounds to four, Derek Gaynor. I thought Robert Garcia was really ineffective. He chased him and chased him and chased him and never landed, you know, never landed really good shots. And I think Alcazar killed him by making him stand the whole fight, and the guy was exhausted. He should have been a Gainer's chest. So we have the difference of opinion here as Gil Clancy sees it 
one point in Garcia's favor, and Harold Letterman. I don't even have to tell you. Favor. I don't even have to tell you how I've scored this fight. I think Garcia did chase him all over the ring, as you see here at the end of the fight. I thought he landed a lot of clean body punches, many more punches than I thought that the Gainer landed. I thought he won the fight clearly, in my view. Maybe Gainer won three rounds, in my view. But it won't be the first time I'm wrong. All right. Michael Buffer seems to have collected the scorecards. Quickly, we look at punch stat numbers. Garcia threw more, landed more, landed at a higher percentage. Gainer produced the only knockdown in the fight. That was in round eight. Michael Buffer now with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Art Lurie scores the belt. 95 to 94. Al Siciliano scores at 96 to 93. And Paul Smith has it 95 to 94 for the winner by unanimous decision. Robert Grandpa Garcia. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what fight you were watching, Harold, but you and I had a strong disagreement in that fight. Over to the camera. Well, Garcia weathers the knockdown and pulls out a victory to the delight of those at ringside who appreciate aggression over self-defense. Harold, a final word from you? Well, Larry, uh, uh, Jim, I tell you, I thought they were getting a box pretty well, to be perfectly frank. I mean, you know, just because he's built like Minute Bowl, you can't take it away from him. Roberto Garcia chased him and chased him and really didn't land a whole lot of clean shots. But, hey, listen, Larry called it right. You can't, you can't, uh, can't take it away from Larry. He was right on the money. 17 wins, no losses, 13 KOs for Roberto Garcia. And here is how Roy Jones Jr., friend and manager to Derek Gaynor, took the decision. First setback of the evening for Jones. Will there be another? We'll see later on down the road. Let's go back upstairs to our host, James Brown. J.D.? All right, Jim, thank you very much. And I'm smiling at the comments of uh, Harold Letterman, uh, remarking about how Derek Gaynor was built much like Manute Bowl. And as such, I thought, although Derek Gaynor may have been cosmetically unattractive in the ring, tactically he fought the right kind of fight, staying away from Garcia as long as he could before delivering those punches. But nonetheless, Garcia comes away victorious. Interestingly, Garcia says he has no problems being the stable mate of, of course, the flashy one, Oscar De La Hoya, and trying to pick and choose from the best assets that Oscar De La Hoya has. Also, Garcia mentioned that although he went over to Japan to turn pro at the age of 17, he wants not to go back anytime soon, only for vacation purposes. After being pressed by Gary Gaynor, he may well want to do just that. All right, coming up next, we've got an NABF super flyweight battle between Domingo Sosa and Danny Kid Dynamite Romero. This ought to be a good one, and this will be coming up in just a few.